Yo, what's up everyone? Daniel Yuck here. Thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today I want to go ahead and elaborate a little bit more and try and shed some light on how much needle is too much needle. This goes back to needle depth. Uh, this goes back to finding the dermis. This all kind of is tied into one video here of how much needle is too much needle and how little is too little. And I want to try and touch base on that within this video. For this video, I'm going to be demonstrating with the CNC Q2. I have a, a wireless power supply right here. I'm going to be using a standard seven round liner from WJX, as you can see right here. I will go ahead and leave a links to the all the stuff in the video in the description below for you all to check out on your end. I highly recommend you pick up a Q2. This is just an all around great tattoo machine. I will go ahead and leave links to some good practice skins down below for you as well. well let me go ahead and open up the needle cart here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is plug in the cartridge or put or input it. So you always wanna start with getting your needle depth right on your tattoo machine first and foremost. So as you can see, that's way too much needle. We're gonna need to take some back. Uh, maybe to around, it, it, this is gonna vary from tattoo is to tattoo is, but I'm probably gonna leave it around there. I think that's a healthy needle depth for me and my style and what I need to do here. Um, because I like to use the tip of the needle and float the needle. I don't ride the tube at all, so I wanna stay away from riding the tube and give me some space between the tube and the tip of the needle. So, basically, I encourage you all to get a fake skin. Do not do this on a human. Do not practice on a human. Get yourself a fake skin. I've seen people use um, really thick practice skins, and this is gonna be a subjective thing. Hey, if you like thick practice skins, I'm not gonna, you know, who am I to say? But I like to use these right here because my approach is I wouldn't want to learn on a thick practice skin and the thickness of in which I'm injecting and putting ink into is not practical to, you know, a human skin. It just doesn't make sense because then I'm going to be developing bad habits in which I press down hard all the time and I'm going to be having constant blowouts. The way that I learned was learning on thin skins like this. And sure enough, learning how to put a saturated line in on thin skin, techniques and application translated well to real skin. And uh, me avoiding blowouts was second nature. I didn't really have a, a problem with blowouts um, next to ever upon my tattooing journey. And I still don't really, I mean, granted, blowouts happen even to the best of the best. But for the most part, you know, we can get through it without blowing out their skin each and every time. With that being said, I personally like to use this specific size skin right here. As you can see, it's very, very thin. I believe it's 1.2 centimeters, if I'm correct. Don't quote me. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate some lines. And I encourage you to get a practice skin and practice on a practice skin and blow it out on purpose. So that way you can feel how much is too much go too soft on purpose so you can feel how soft is too soft so that way when you're finding that dermis where the ink needs to be you know exactly where to go each and every time this is basically going to help you develop muscle memory in terms of where to put the ink so i'm going to go ahead and grab some ink as you can see we're all full now i'm going to go ahead and wipe some excess off right there and let's just go ahead and pull some lines here so I'm gonna go ahead and pull a line and then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go deeper here the first, on the first line we're gonna uh, go way too deep and we're gonna see if we can blow it out on purpose. So before I pull that line, right off the bat, you can see I'm digging into the skin and you can kind of hear the different levels of the deepness in which the resistance is pushing against the tattoo machine creating that sound. So you would, Upon tattooing, let's say if you didn't have any experience, people think that you have to really drive and dig these uh, needles in there. And that's not always the case. Even though this line may look good right here, if this was done on a real person, like on real skin, it would have been blown out. As you can see, we have a blowout through the skin right there because I pressed too hard and my hand speed wasn't matching how hard I was pressing. Even though you always want to avoid overpressing at all costs, don't ever overpress. Um, that's what these practice skins are for. Let's go ahead and pull the line while we're pressing down too soft. Even if we move our hand speed slower,
if this was on real skin and I'm trying to relay this as best I can in terms of real skin, this may have looked like it got on there. On this skin it did. But if this was on human skin, we would have been in the epidermis and this would have fell out within a couple of weeks and or faded over time within like the next decade. These lines would have been next to non-existent on that existing tattoo. So what I'm trying to get at is you have to find that middle layer. You have the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. We're trying to get to that dermis. And the idea of this video is to show you how much is too much, how little is too little. And um, to help you build that exercise of placing it into the dermis each and every time. Or helping you build that memory of placing it into the dermis every time. Let's go ahead and put one right where it needs to be. If you listen to, you can hear the skin break. And from that point forward, it's all about the practice that you've given yourself to pull a steady, clean line. As you can see, that line wasn't that bad. That's a really good line. In the back, we have no blowouts at all. We're we are clean, we're good. This would have stuck and stayed for life. Let me go ahead and get a little bit more ink. Let's pull another line. And we're gonna do this one correctly again. You hear we're in the dermis. Let's go ahead and wipe this off. As you can see, that is a clear, good, clean line. This is exactly what I am looking for each and every time I pull a line. With practice, as you can see, there's no blowouts. With enough practice, sure enough, all my lines now with my Q2, I can use a quill cartridge, WJX. I'm getting nice one-pass lines each and every time. You want those one-pass lines. Another little good exercise here is on the practice skin, um, do little dots and blow it out on purpose. <laughs> So that way you're gonna know how much is exactly too much a needle. I highly encourage you to use your slip of your practice skin to poke holes in it, you know, do lines. Uh, so that way you're getting a feel of how much needle is too much needle and how little is too little. Uh, that's basically where I started. I mean, not literally poke holes in it, but you know, do dot work. Press down, um, try and blow it out. Let's go ahead and see if we blew out all of these holes right here, all of these dots. As you can see, the majority of them got blown out as well. Um, I, I encourage this, again, this is on the practice skin, so that way you're not doing this and second guessing and learning this part right here on humans. This is going to be probably one of the best ways to learn is on these practice silicone skins. So that way, um, yeah, you can do this as much as you need to. This little slip of silicone skin can provide me with so much practice. If I use it for just dotting and lining, I could just sit here with a one cup of ink, one little cup of ink, and just doing this all day. Like just, you know, trying to actually do um, correct dot work, blowing it out, seeing how much is too deep, hearing what the machine sounds like, feeling what it feels like when I'm in the correct spot. Um, I could just do this all day like that. But that's the idea behind it. Um, just get yourself a few little slips like this. Get one if you want, and even just a rectangle size, and do this with it all day. And then even, um, I encourage you to, obviously, you know, we're blowing that out. You don't want to be doing this on human skin. You don't want to have to second guess on human skin, which is why we're practicing on these little slips of practice skin and we're just pulling little, like literally little basic lines and getting comfortable with getting into the dermis first try each and every time. And this is how you're gonna find out how much needle is too much needle, how little, you know, how much needle is too little. Um, this is how you're gonna find that out. I can't really explain it to you, but I can show you a way to get to where you're going. And this is a great way to do that. It doesn't even matter what you do. You can just sit here and draw tallies. The idea for this, again, is to find out how much needle is too much needle, how little is, you know, too little. Um, and that is the idea behind it. I can't teach you that. I can't um, tell you exactly what to do. And even if I could tell you the specifics and what you should, I guess, be doing, quote unquote, 
Um, it's not going to work the same for everyone, but this practice alone is a great place to start. And this is a great way to gain some uh, knowledge and insight as to what to be looking for when you're tattooing. You don't want to have to be doing this sort of practice here, uh, how deep to go on a human. This is not how you want to approach it. You don't want to use people as your practice skins when you could have invested, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 bucks into sheets of practice skin and practice over a period of like half a year to a year and then begun that way. It's exactly how I, I do it and do it now. Like, um, even though I'm fully capable of tattooing on human skin, I love tattooing on practice skin. It's just fun. Uh, it keeps my skill set sharp. Uh, it allows me to explore um, even further as far as like styles and what have you. But um, yeah, that's the idea behind it. Let's go ahead and see if any of these blew out here. As you can see, there's one that's right here that we blew out. And that just goes down to practice. You can fill this whole skin just by doing that. And I guarantee you, by the time you're done filling this up with dots, circles, lines, whatever you put on it, you're gonna be much more, um, you know, I guess much more along the way of getting to where you're going than you were before. Uh, that's the idea behind it. Let's actually pull the needle out. Let's try something weird here. I'm not sure if this is gonna be truly relevant, but I figured it's a cool little experiment that we can actually try. So if we go like this and we press the needle out, as you can see, we don't need too much needle to get the ink into the actual dermis. So as you can see right here, so let's just say this is the tip of the needle. The reason why you always want to work off the tip of the needle is to be able to get into the dermis, which would be roughly around here if i'm correct give or take you know everyone's dermis is going to vary so that's why they say artists typically take the first 10 to 20 minutes figuring out that person's skin because their dermis is going to range but as you can see that's the idea behind it that's exactly why i stick my needle out a little bit further so that way my tube doesn't hit the skin upon tattooing because i don't want uh the tube riding on the skin so I always stick my needle out further so that way when I'm in the dermis, I can pull my line where I need to pull it, as you can see right here. But that is the idea, like that's how deep you want to get within the dermis each and every time. You want to be able to build consistency to where you're putting the ink into right here and you're pulling that line all the way across. And I know it's easier said than done, but that's what these are good for. These are great for that. But I just wanted to go ahead and kind of demonstrate and show you all with this specific approach, real time of how much needle is too much needle. Always work off just the tip of the needle. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get a side view of me pulling a line with this cart so that way you can see um, how much goes in there. So we'll go ahead and see if we can do that and then close the video out. So as you can see, it's just the tip of the needle that we're working off of. We're not pressing into the actual side or we're not pressing into it. We're not stabbing the needle like so. <laughs> we're just working off of the tip of the needle. I know it's kind of hard to see because how much this wobbles here, but We're working just off the tip of the needle. You can hear it when the needle breaks into the dermis, you can hear like a little crackling type sound. That's what you want to go ahead and listen for. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So as you can see, we're just working off the literal tip of the needle. We're not jamming it in there. We're taking it up and it's just the tip of the needle. You can literally see the little imprint as well. See the needle is building up. The needle is in the dermis. So you can kind of tell when you're in the dermis if you're looking at the tip, like the actual where the point where it touches, you can see the needle build up into a complete circle. So look, look closely. 
see it's into a complete circle now. Boom, ready to pull that line, keep it where you put it in, and that line's perfect. You see how it's building up into a complete full circle there? That's how you know we're in where we want to be. That's what you want to look for, and you can literally hear that crackling sound. So as you all can see, this is what happens when we put too much needle. I mean, you can literally hear that. This is a CNC Q2, so it shouldn't sound like, like, a, like a coil machine. Once you get my idea of, in, you know, in terms of putting the needle into the dermis first try where it needs to be as opposed to having to go over or not, not, you know, not hard enough as you can see right here in which these will fade over time. And again, everyone's different, but again, for this video, I'm just trying to shed light and show you all how much needle is too much needle, how little is too little as I stated, and some ways that you can go about, you know, getting more knowledge under your belt for this practice here. But yeah, guys, there you all have it. If I didn't touch base on something specific that you may have wanted to know in this video, by all means, please feel free to drop it in the comments down below. I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. If you're not, be sure to give me a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Daniel and TikTok under Daniel Yuck at D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K as I would genuinely appreciate your support. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel as I will have more videos like this coming up here in the future. I genuinely appreciate you tuning in this long. Don't forget to ring that bell. You have a great day.